Hey there, hunters. Galactic Bat here. I, similar to many of you, have been swept up in the return to Monster Hunter World hype in preparation for Wilds. However, unlike many of you, I did not play and enjoy this game in its heyday, so my return to world is more like my first look at an already vastly inhabited space. Never fearing a challenge, I have pushed onward into the steep learning curve of this game as my first Monster Hunter title, and I've decided to go about experiencing the game in a unique way. Over the next several months, I will be streaming a playthrough of every single weapon, solo from a fresh file all the way to Fatalis. As this video reaches you, I am currently in the middle of Master Rank on the first weapon of the playthrough, Greatsword. No Defender or Guardian gear allowed, just good old-fashioned game progression. As I go through each of the weapons, I will be documenting my experience with the weapon, what I have learned about the weapon from playing with it, and what I have learned about the game overall. However, as previously stated, I am a brand new player, which means I've learned a vast amount more about the game as a whole than I have about the aforementioned Big Damage Boy. The purpose of this video is twofold. Number one, this serves as the introduction to a new playlist here on the channel, one which will include all of my weapon summaries. And number two, I'd like to take a moment to share some of the essential knowledge I've gathered about the game as a whole, such that my greatsword video isn't completely overrun by this treasure trove of knowledge I've acquired. Let's start with the level of experience I started at. Having previously only played the game for around 70 hours as an Insect Glaive main, there were a few things that escaped me playing around with the game the first time that, had I known, probably would have kept me in the game longer. Firstly, and possibly the most important one, if a weapon feels clunky, it's purely a skill issue and not a game design issue. In my testing for the series, I went into the practice range and sat there with the Rex Weapon Workshop videos and just... figured some stuff out. And while I have completely forgotten 90% of what works for each of the weapons, it did show me that in the right hands, every weapon in this game is just as viable as the other for solo play. Yes, even Hunting Horn, which I previously thought of as the co-op weapon. This alone is what filled me with the motivation to pull a stunt like this. Secondly, there's no way around it, the UI is unintuitive and bad. On my original playthrough, I did absolutely no level of inventory management, had absolutely no idea what a radial menu was, much less how to customize it, and didn't pay any attention to collecting or crafting items, largely due to not knowing how. I played the game like a buffoon, brazenly rushing into every quest, even going so far as to try capturing a large monster with the capture net. Part of this was due to the fact that I didn't read any of the TLDR tutorials as I was swept up in the love for the combat system with my shiny new bug stick. Now, knowing about loadouts and radial menus and item management, I can wholeheartedly say, yes, the UI is bad, but at least I can use it. Thirdly, this game is deep. I could have spent 100 hours just in base game, collecting gear, catching endemic life, rehunting monsters to try to get a better fight, collecting gear, trying out different builds, unlocking all of my pignets. Did I mention collecting gear? Not only that, but the build diversity being so vast that I could build for each individual monster if I wanted. I'm glad I'm playing on stream, or the grind would consume my entire life. On top of all this, the story is compelling enough and the monsters lifelike enough to have me wondering, are we the baddies? I know we aren't, don't get me started on the lore, but there was a specific moment with the Tsitsiyaku when it was trying to desperately flash me with its broken antennae that almost made me cry. Fourthly? I think I found the reason for segments is unconventional. Fourthly, there's a combat. Oh my god, it is so satisfying to actually pull off combos, learn the fights, and put your builds into action. But there were some things in the game that I just wasn't doing. I greatly ignored the Iceborne edition, the Clutch Claw, for the majority of my time in World before this revisit. It was only watching Jalbagel speedrun the game that made me realize how much I was missing out on by not tenderizing monster parts. But it doesn't stop there. I wasn't using the Slinger or mounting monsters until the Greatsword playthrough. I would mount, then immediately hop off, unaware that I was missing an opportunity to create a window for myself. So overall, I'd summarize my gained combat experience as I've learned to create damage windows. Anyways, I think that about wraps it up. All in all, I'd say I've already learned so much about the game that I just refused to pay attention to before, and I'm looking forward to completing the base game, and especially Iceborne with every weapon class in the game. Thank you very much for watching, and if you've made it through the video, drop a comment and tell me what your favorite weapon is in World and why you like it. P.S. If the handler calls me pard one more time, I'm putting in a request for the serious handler to be my partner permanently. Take care.